the 31st of March in 2022, the newly elected president of the Norwegian Football Association, Lise Klavenes, she took to the podium during a FIFA Congress in Doha, where she formally criticized uh, FIFA and Qatar for disregarding human rights in the build-up to the Qatar World Cup. Klavenes, who's a prof uh, former professional footballer and a lawyer, had just been elected during a National Football Congress, and uh, she was elected after a substantial number of supporters and clubs demanded a boycott of the Qatar World Cup. Uh, numerous allegations of corruption in FIFA, reports of human rights abuses against migrant workers, and an article in The Guardian that highlighted the uninvestigated deaths of migrant workers in Qatar really angered supporters in Norway uh, who demanded action. And this was part of Klavnes's mandate to try and hold FIFA accountable. And, you know, it hadn't been until an ITUC conference in 2013, two days before Amnesty International launched its first report on the exploitation and abuse of migrant workers, that FIFA publicly recognized that the situation of migrant workers in Qatar was unacceptable. And nonetheless, FIFA and its members failed to take meaningful action to effectively and fully protect the rights of the majority of the migrant workers that made the World Cup possible. Klaven as a speech, it, it made global headlines and it, it really shook FIFA, who despite being a democratic organization, is not accustomed to any public debate with its members. And during this year's FIFA Congress, just after the World Cup, the Norwegian FA formally presented a proposal that called on FIFA subcommittee for human rights to assess whether it complied with its own human rights policy, including the right to remedy for victims of tournament related human rights abuses. And FIFA adopted the proposal, again, without debate, but we're still um, waiting for the conclusions of their report. And the striking thing, however, is that despite the fact that several FAs had voiced public concerns about the World Cup-related human rights abuses, the Norwegian FA was the only one out of 211 FAs which formally raised their concerns and proposed concrete actions in FIFA's democratic decision-making forums. That is a striking disregard of its human rights responsibilities that the FAs share as members of FIFA. And it's also a central explanation as to why there's so little accountability. And now everybody's asking themselves whether history will repeat itself with FIFA's apparent decision to 